as we hit higher prices across so many different places, and in some cases it's because, you know, input costs are higher, companies that are able to be more efficient, to actually take advantage of AI, of machine learning, of analytics, are going to be in a better competitive position. Maybe we'll see more value put on that going forward. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I think that we see the digital transformation being able to offer increases in efficiency, reducing a lot of the overhead associated with the manual processes. We're seeing an amazing transition to code being the way that we're able to actually use these new areas of technology to do the processes that were formerly done um, very manually. So I think your insight is spot on. So what are you investing in then playing off of that? If we're heading into a time when maybe some prices are going to be higher or, or at least, you know, input costs are going to be higher. Oh, there you are. You're not just joining us on the phone. Good to see you this morning. Lo, good to see you. Uh, so, I mean, it, it seems to me that if some companies are able to take that higher cost input and say, hey, I'm not going to pass that along because I'm able to be more efficient. What do you as an investor focus on investing in that you think is going to put you in a better position because of that? One of the things that we're super excited about right now is what we see happening in financial services, being able to better use technology. In fact, J.P. Morgan is a company that we think is absolutely fascinating, comparing, comparing it and contrasting it to all of the younger fintech startups. You know, you look at J.P. Morgan, they're investing $11 billion in the technology. They have a tech team of about 50,000 people. And what they've been able to do is to really decrease the cost, again, of this overhead normally associated with a lot of these manual processes that are done by people. The return on investment for J.P. Morgan is one of the best in the industry. And we think they're in a really unique position to be able to ultimately compete partner and even acquire some of these fintech companies. Why? Because they have a retail footprint in the United States that services about 60,000 customers, and they have all this massive amount of data, number one, to be able to help them <laughs> determine in a very data-driven process what those new features and functionality needs to be to service these customers. And number two, those retail branches actually could be beneficial getting the foot traffic to come in and do things like open up new types of accounts and credit cards. And then when you look at the expansion opportunities, J.P. Morgan is taking a more digital first approach in going into new markets outside of the United States. And I suspect what we will see is the ability for that company to be able to invest into a lot of these fintech startups with dangling the carrot of providing massive distribution at scale that those fintech companies just can't achieve in a short period of time.